That about does it. Six part series, how to get started fishing on I Fish Club with Johnny Rod. Why am I Johnny Rod? As my friends call me, Johnny Rod. So, you know, in the very beginning I talked about why I like fishing so much. And just to summarize why I like to fish so much, you know, for every species of fish, and there's, I don't even know how many, and you consider saltwater, freshwater, consider the United States, consider the world, there's a lot. Um, for every species, you could fish them with live bait or a lure. You know, either way. I prefer lure fishing just because it's a little more sporty. But every once in a while, especially saltwater, I like uh, fishing with bait. You know, and I tend, we tend to fish with the bait the fish already eat. So it's easier. It always is easier to catch fish on live bait. Um, out in the ocean, we fish with sardines, anchovies all the time, live ones. Cast them out, and they just start swimming, and fish come and hammer them, and the fight's on, and it is just a blast. And then if you get bored with that, you're gonna throw in the worst. You know, uh, I like that it's always changing. You know, that, that there's always this new stuff coming out. You know, fishing reels have gotten a lot better over the years, especially the saltwater fishing reels. They're completely different. Nobody even fishes with an old fishing reel anymore. Freshwater, uh, you know, they've gotten a little better, a little smoother, a little faster. But generally, gosh, you can fish with a you can fish with a 30-year-old reel almost as good as you can fish with a new reel. But the baits is a different story. A couple years ago, I was out uh, in our local islands uh, fishing and uh, got into uh, uh, a group of fish. Well, it took a while. We, we sat there all day long and cast. I cast for six straight hours to catch this guy. That's about a 35-pound white sea bass. And I caught him on a spinning tackle, on spinning tackle, some lightweight spinning tackle. It took me about 15 minutes to get him in. He fought hard. But what I caught him on, these didn't even exist three years ago. Some guy came up with an idea to make a lure that looks like our, kind of mimics our uh, red crab we have in our saltwater. It smells like garlic. It smells like an Italian crab. Um, this bait is all the rage out here in California right now. It's called a hookup bait. And that day, after six hours of casting, I got lucky. I got the one. Looked like I landed it. But we went fishing near the island. I caught a bunch of calico bass and I caught a sheephead, which I showed you in an earlier video. I mean, this thing caught three different species of fish that day. That's pretty cool, you know, on a lure that never even existed three years ago. So I like that a lot about fishing. I try new stuff. I learn new stuff. You know, it's very dynamic like that. You know, it, it charges me up. Um, and, you know, the... Another thing I like about fishing alone is you can just do it anytime, anywhere by yourself. You can do it in a boat, you can do it on land, you can do it with a friend, you can do it with a group, you can do it alone. It's like a Dr. Seuss rhyme, doesn't it? Um, but it's cool like that. I'm, I'm filming this right in the middle of this pandemic. Uh, and I've been fishing by myself, you know. It, it, it's, it's implied social distancing. There's no one within six feet of you. There shouldn't be. Um, you know, so it's really cool like that. So those are really, you know, the main reasons I really like to uh, fish, you know. Uh, it's dynamic, new stuff's always coming, you can do it alone, do it with a group. So, you know, in, in video one I talked about rods and reels, what you might want to buy. You know, these, these uh, spinning reels and spinning rods, they're easy to use, they're nice like that. But if you're going to find yourself in like a pond only or in trout area only, you might want something a little lighter. You know, if you find yourself in a like a 2,000 series reel and a 4 to 10 pound rod works really well for trout and streams or pond fishing. Um, you know, I didn't mention striped bass in any of this. I probably should have because stri striped bass are pretty uh, prevalent in our waterways. You know, we got them in rivers, we got them in lakes in the Midwest. We have them in our lakes here in California. We have them in the Delta here. We got them in the ocean here. We got them in New Jersey. You know, back in North Carolina, uh, it's a big deal. So generally. Those stripers are big, they're brutes. Probably need a little heavier tackle. Something like 12 to 20 rod and a 4000 series reel. Probably more if you know that's all you're going to be doing is stripe bass fishing. So, you know, I went with the assumption we have one fishing rod, rod, one fishing reel to start. So I just started out with that 3000 series 6 to 12 pound rod. Six and a half, seven foot. Right, to get you started. You know, you can go on to Craigslist. You can go on to Craigslist and buy yourself a used set of equipment. 50 bucks. 
you find you don't like fishing, you just sell it, you know? Sell it for that 50 bucks you spent. But, and so, when you do that, the one, so you bought a used piece of equipment. What you don't want to have used is your fishing line, all right? This stuff's very important, because when it comes right down to it, you can fish with an old rod, an old reel, but this is all you have between you and your fish, is this fishing line, okay? You want this stuff to be new, all right? You can have the old stuff in the bottom half, remember I told you? Fill up the first half of the reel with older stuff, and just keep that on there, and keep changing out the upper half with new lines, save yourself some money. You know, a spool will go twice as far, obviously. But make sure the line's fresh and new. You know, if you're fishing a lot, you probably want to change that a couple times a year. Um, once, you know, if you don't fish a ton, and by all that I mean, you know, once or twice a month, you probably get by once a year. But if you're fishing every weekend, a couple times a week, you don't want to change out your line a little more often, a couple times a year, three times a year. Assuming you don't lose all your line, because I lose my line all the time. Uh, you get twists in this, and it's just a pain in the butt getting a twist out of it. I told you, you know, you get a twist in this thing, and it's no fun. And again, you want to pull your twist off. You'll, you'll know when you have a twist, you'll see it coming off the spool. Whoop. You want to pull it out, you know, you want to pull it out like that, off the spool. Don't pull it off like that. Don't do that, because it's all going to come off in a clump, and then you'll be splicing. <laughs> so if you want to do that, learn that dropper loop knot. And by the way, that's what it's called. It's called a dropper loop knot. Pull your you pull your loops out like that, okay? Off your spool. Um, and again, new line, good fresh line. Check for nicks all the time. Make sure you, because you're going to be fishing in, in the sticks and stones, and you know it'll be breaking your line. And, so check for nicks. All right, abrasion on your, you know, abrasion on the line. You don't want any of that here, on that. Um, so I talked to you about, you know, your knots that you're going to use. Uh, you know, the three, the clinch knot, the improved clinch knot, the palomar knot, and the dropper loop knot. And maybe they were clear, maybe you saw, but maybe you didn't. I'm going to add them to the video tag down below, some links to some guys already tying the knot. And they use ropes, or line, or heavy twine, so you can see the knot clearly of how it's uh, tied. Alright? Um, that'll be helpful for you. And learn them. Man, just learn them so that you know them like that. When you're sitting at home watching TV, tie some knots. <laughs> tie knots. Because when you're out there, you don't, you know, a little intense, but every time you're doing something other than fishing, you're not catching fish, right? You're not getting bit if you're tying knots. So you want to be fishing, not tying. So the more practice you do at home, even casting, you can go cast at a bucket at home. The more practice you do at home, better it's going to be on the water and there is no substitute for being on water you know this is a this is a learning curve and I'm trying to shorten it for you but everything's going to take time tying knots will take a little bit of time filleting fish it's going to take a lot of time I'm going to tell you it's not an easy thing to do to fillet a nice perfect fish casting you get pretty good casting in a day you know so but just everything's going to take time to learn so the more practice you get and the more water time you get the, fa the better and faster you're going to get at being good at all of it. It's like anything else. You know, in pro sports they say it's 10,000 hours is what it takes to become, you know, expert or advanced to expert. 10,000 hours. Jeez. 40 hours in a day. I mean, 24 hours in a day. Seven days a week. What's that? 120 hours a week. 128 hours a week times four. That's, I don't know, 600, 600 hours a month times 12. What's that kind of? It's a year and a half's worth of work. 24 hours a day. You don't have that kind of time, so. I don't know, it probably took me about five years to get real good at fishing. You know, being out there a lot, practicing. Boy, but when you get good, it's easy. Everything's just easy, like everything else. So, I would urge you to practice so you're fishing more on the water than fumbling with your gear, all right? And so, I would definitely, uh, Practice, practice, practice. You know, in that one fishing, in the one show where I was on the water where I actually caught that bass, that hook ended up in the side of its mouth. Well, sometimes the hook doesn't end up in the side of its mouth. Um, get yourself a set of needle nose pliers, okay? This is needle nose pliers. This gets down into their mouth, all right? Like Austin Powers movie. Um, and this is how you, get, how you get deep in there and remove the hooks. Now sometimes that hook's going to get all the way down on that fish's belly. 
or you can't get that hook out. Just cut your line if you're going to release the fish. If you're going to keep the fish, it doesn't matter much. Keep the fish and keep, but you, you can pull the hook out, I guess, or try to get it out, but you can just cut it and retie. But sometimes you'll notice, you'll see his belly. The hook will be all the way down in his belly. And I just normally just cut the line, tie another hook on, all right? And if you're good at tying knots, it's only a 30 second deal, you know? That's not that much time. But this is a good tool to have. It has cutters on it, it has a long nose, long beak. Honk, honk, honk. Hey, look, it's orange. It's camouflaged. Um, you know, when you're out, another thing when you're out there on the lake fishing or anywhere fishing on a river, and you get your lure caught in a bush or a on a rock or something on the other, I don't know, away from you, don't pull your line at you, all right? Because if that lure comes off and you've pulled it at you, guess where that lure's going? Right, it's going right at you. And I've had them come right at me and <laughs> ducked, but once it went right into my leg and a hook has a barb on it. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but there's a barb on that hook. It's right on the inside of the hook. All right. I almost hooked myself with it. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll do it like this. The reason this thing's going to suspend from... Uh, it's not going to work. Um, that barb is what's on there to keep the thing from coming out of the fish once you hook it. Guess where else it's sticking and not coming out? <laughs> yeah. Your skin. And that thing's stuck. And I couldn't get it out. I had to pull all the way through. And man, human skin is tough. I had to pull it all the way through and cut the hook and then pull it out. There's a way to use fishing line. And you can probably Google this. Using fishing line to get a, a hook out of skin, I guess would be the search terms. I've never done it before, but I've seen it where guys will make a loop like that. And they'll tie it around the lure. And they'll, I don't know how it's done, but it comes out. Just go, if, if you can go to the bush, go to the bush and get your lure out manually. That's the best way. If you can't, if you pull, pull down and away. All right? So down and away from you. Not at you. Down and away. All right? So that's kind of an important bit of information, don't you think? Um, on the final episode, I was talking about, uh, well, I cooked the fish. And it didn't go very well. Sorry. <laughs> it was not blackened. The pan didn't stay hot enough because it lost its heat when I opened the barbecue up and it was cold out in the morning. And, you know, right now the temperature is 95. That morning was 65. It would probably blacken up better today. But blackened implies blackened. So the herbs and all the spices are supposed to burn basically when you blacken. And the butter burns from a heat source that's hot. Generally, you want that pan on medium to medium high heat, all right? And you want it to heat up dry, nothing in it, for five to 10 minutes. So the first step is turn the stove on or the barbecue on, medium to medium high. Put the pan on there, don't put anything in it, and just let it sit there for five to 10 minutes, all right? And then you bring your basted fish in that, you know, you basted with butter. You can use oil, but butter works best. Put your seasoning on it and put it on that pan, and you should give off a puff of smoke. Honestly, it should make you cough. <laughs> That's why I like doing it outside because you got some ventilation. But that that spiciness in the uh, fireman going by. spiciness in there start making you cough. FYI. Um, but that's how you do it. All right. And after it cooks, just depend again, depending upon how thick your fillets are and if they're cold or uh, warm room temperature will dictate how long it's going to take to cook it. A thin bass fillet that you got off a lake that's been thawed out, it's going to cook in one minute. And I'm not kidding. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, take it off, cover it in tin foil, you're done. I took that fish off the other day, and it uh, it wasn't but 50% cooked through. It, it wasn't going right, so I had to take it off, you know. I had to take it off the stove because it wasn't black and it was brown. It was brown, and, um, but it was seasoned. But you know, it was only 50% cooked, and I put that tin foil on it, and I came back 10 minutes later, it was cooked all the way through. So the heat just kept going. 
And so that's what will happen. It'll keep going. And it's just something about putting that tin foil over the top before it's fully cooked and just letting it kind of steam in there makes it really nice. It's hard to overcook the fish that way. And how you can tell is when the fish is in the pan and you flip it, for the only time you need to flip it generally, flip it once, take an object, you know, like a spatula or a, 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 a handle of a wooden spoon under the um, fish and lift up on it. And if it still stays together, but you can see that it's mostly cooked, about 80% cooked, and there's a little clear, little um, raw flesh still in there, take it off, put it in the, in the um, pot, in the uh, plate, put the cover, put the tin foil over it, and just let it steam. And that's, you never go wrong doing it that way. It just is very good every time. All right? So, probably the last bit of information was the, the sauce I made, that, that sour cream mayonnaise sauce. It, uh, it, uh, It needs about a couple of hours to sit after you've put it together. All right? um, if you're going to eat it right away, you're going to miss out on all it can be. It's just not going to be the best it can be. The best it can be is overnight, so if you can think ahead and do it overnight, that's best. But you know, most people don't have that kind of time or inclination to do something like that. So give it a couple of hours, hopefully, that you've got to do that. Otherwise, just add a bunch of butter <laughs> and put that butter in the uh, uh, pan with the blackened that remnants of the black and then use that as your sauce. Uh, maybe throw a little cream in there. Uh, that would be pretty good too. Um, so that's about it. You know, that's a summary of the first six episodes going forward. Probably do on, <clears throat> you know, on the water episodes of certain kinds of fish in fresh water. You know, we do have striped bass out here. They're not that popular or prevalent, so it's tough to shoot and be successful. And they just are aggressive fish. I mean. You put just about anything in front of a striped bass while it's feeding, he's an apex predator. He'll, he'll eat everything in the lake. Um, a trout won't eat a bass, but a bass will eat a trout. A striped bass will eat them all. Um, <clears throat> but there's not that many opportunities. I'll probably mostly focus on uh, bass and trout fishing. All right? I'm not a big cat fisherman because you gotta, uh, you got to sit around and wait for them to you know, come along and, uh, and take, your, you know, take your bait um, while you're sitting there waiting. Uh, funny, the other day I was fishing and uh, caught one using live shad. I caught three of these suckers uh, while I was fishing with shad. And uh, it's unusual only because I don't catch a lot of catfish, bass fishing. You know, I was basically trying to catch bass with my live shad. Um, but I caught three catfish that day. But generally when you go catfishing, you know, you do this. Sit in a chair on the side of a, on, a, on the bank, cast out or in your boat. This is not my scene. I just, I'm way too spastic to sit still for very long. And for me, fishing is a contact sport. It's not a relaxing sport. <laughs> Sorry to say. But hey, passion's passion, right? And uh, I prefer throwing lures and being active. And the, the shad fishing was active because it's, you know, a constant bait that you got to feel and it's moving and it dies and you got to keep baiting. And the fish are very aggressive. I probably got 25 fish the other day fishing with live shad. So that's my preference, just high activity fishing is how I like to fish. Sitting in a chair on the side of the lake, not very often. I'll do it for trout, for a change of pace, just sit there with that Carolina rig, and a little treble hook and a piece of power bait or an inflated night car like I showed you, sitting up and you know, sit on the side of the shore and just relax, but it's rare. So I'll probably do some trout and some bass. I already have a trout reel ready to go, fishing stream, it's got good video, so I can uh, impart some knowledge there. And the bass fishing I do a lot, so I'll have a lot of video there as well. All right, how's that sound? So maybe one day we'll do some salt water, but I don't, I don't know. Salt water, so uh, you know, if you're in Southern California, you have some questions about salt water fishing, hit me up because I have done that for 47 years too, and uh, rather adept at the salt water fishing scene in Southern California. I'll be glad to help you there and answer some questions. All right, but if you're in Florida, hey, I don't know what to tell you. Ask a pro. I wish I was in Florida though, I mean, you guys got some good fish down there. Snook, tarpon, permit, bonefish, those are some great saltwater species. All right, I'll talk to you soon. I'm Johnny Rod, this has been iFish Club, getting started fishing. Thanks for joining me, we'll be in touch, bye now. <laughs>